This is Bliss Oasis. Change your thinking, change your life. Hello and welcome to Bliss Oasis Africa. I'm your host, Patrick Ngugi. At Bliss Oasis Africa, we bring you stories that entertain, inform, and educate, upgrading your body, mind, and soul. We believe that everyone has a story, and each week we go out there meeting older people and getting their stories, passions, and how they overcame their challenges. These stories can be hilarious, trending, educative, and fulfilling. For more info, please check our website links in the description. If you are new here, please make sure you subscribe and click the bell so that you do not miss future episodes. And today, we feature Jeff Wawero, a young man from Nanyuki who has literally con conquered the mountain. Jeff, who is, a train, who is a trained filmmaker, choreographer, painter, and web designer, will tell us about his passion for climbing Mount Kenya and how he literally ran away from Nairobi to take refuge to this fast growing town in the slopes of Mount Kenya. But before we go to the interview, Let's listen to, to today's message. This week's message is about staying connection, or rather, this week's message is about staying connected to the source. We are told many times, but we keep forgetting that the kingdom of God is within us. This means that we are connected to the creator directly since he is in each one of us. However, we get disconnected from him when we forget our true nature and instead of attracting God-like qualities such as peace, love, harmony, and abundance, and many more, we attract the opposite, which is discord, hatred, and disharmony. Just because we carry this untruth that tells us that we are separate from each other and even from God. Peace starts when we remember that we can enjoy all attributes of God, such as peace, love, abundance, and, other, and others, only when we reconnect. When we stop unplugging from the source, but stay plugged in, when we remain connected, you will realize that you are a physical extension of source energy with access to all power of boundless universe. You also realize that you are master creator, constantly creating your life in exact accord with your thoughts and feelings. You are also an eternal being, worthy of all desire, all of your desire, and oneness is your natural state. Plugging in is just a matter of allowing the connection, because the power is already available, existing in you, through you and also for you. Then you still plug in through prayer, meditation, communion with nature, or whatever makes you happy. The better you feel, the more plug in you are. Thank you very much. And let us now listen to the interview with Jeff, all the way from Nanyuki. Welcome. Yeah. So Jeff Wawero, Welcome to yeah. this Oasis Africa podcast, uh, which we have been Thank doing. You. Yeah, we have been doing this uh, only on audio, but for the first time, and you are lucky because 2021, yeah. when we <laughs> 2021, when did you say mm. to do a video? You are the first one. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Karibu Sana and. Uh, and Sana. Yeah, how is Nanyuki? Nanyuki is great. Yes. Nanyuki is great. Weather is nice. Yeah. Um, it's a uh, it's a bit uh, um, confusing weather patterns uh -huh. last year, but you know, yeah, but it's great overall. It is quite hot. Many overall. changes since you were last year. I right guess... now it's a bit hot, but mm. where I am, it gets a bit windy, which is why yes. I'm wearing a jacket. Oh yeah, I can um, see. Because I'm I'm a bit high up. Yeah. Mm. Um, but is it is it is it it's but, not cold at the moment? 
No, it's not cold. Just at night oh, right. and early in the morning. But yeah, yeah I, I remember. I know it can be January terribly. Weather. Yeah, it can be terribly cold during cold season. And when it yeah. decides hot, it can yeah. decide to be hot. Uh, yeah. So tell us. Yeah, um, how have you been? Yeah. Well, I've been fine since I left Nanyuki five yeah. years ago. I, yeah. I think I need another yeah. visit. Yeah, you won't <laughs> recognize it. <laughs> you will take me around, and I think with the new trains it's coming, very, out, it's going to be more exciting. I'll charge you a tourism fee. <laughs> yes, uh, Nanyuki is full of tourism hustlers. Yeah, this uh, now you can enjoy at least Gary Amoshi. We na kupuka Gary Amoshi na kuna mama. But at least now we can use yeah. Gary Amoshi to come to Manuki. Mm. Yeah. So Kabi, um, I knew you those days. I knew you as a web designer. You're also a very good yeah. uh, friend of mine. We did a few things together. Good things, not bad things. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, just tell us a bit, a bit uh, about you before we talk about mountain climbing, which I think is one of your hobbies. Mm. Yeah, tell us, yeah, like, so, uh, um, yeah. tell us your name again and uh, a bit of your history yeah. where you grow up and so on. Yeah, um, I'm Jeff Waweru. I, um, I've been living in Anyuki for 10 years now. Yeah. In May this year, it's going to be my 11th year in Anyuki. Oh. Um, I came here, yeah, I came here from Nairobi um, because at the time, uh, so I studied uh, graphic design, animation, and um, a basic introductory course to film and stuff like that. Okay. Um, well, not really on the film, more on animation, making cartoons and things like that. And then there was a there wasn't a lot of work in Nairobi at the time. This is um, around two thousand and eight is when I I finished my course. So I knew one guy in Nanyuki. One one of my classmates used to come to Nanyuki almost every month. Yeah. Um. So he told me about this place, and you know, we decided to come and try and shoot something. So we came up in two thousand and. So first introduced me to someone who was from here, um, who he was doing little projects with. Um, and then we decided to come and try and shoot a music video for a, a guy who was from Mombasa. Um, so we came up, we shot uh, the music video, and then we we went back to Nairobi, but two weeks later, I think, or, or two months, uh, maybe a month, a month later, I was back here. Yeah, um, just to visit, but I, uh, at the time, Nairobi was not very nice to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, the one time I'd been, I remember a, a, a big turning point was one day I was, uh, there was no power at home um, at my parents' house. Yeah. And I was going to. Yeah, you know, those all day power cuts from Kenya Power where they announced they're cutting power for the whole day. So there was one of those and I had some freelance work I was doing. So I took my computer to a friend's house in Umoja. And when I got there, as soon as I got out of the Matatu, I was arrested. Because <laughs> the cops said I didn't have a, yeah, in Umoja. Ah. So I was told that I'd, I'd, I'm carrying a computer without a receipt. <laughs> So yeah, I was just hassled. So I was hassled, and then I never got to to that job. Um, so I was just little things were frustrating me about Nairobi, and mm. I was willing to try something else. But who are you born? Why born in Nairobi? I came up here. I was born in Nairobi. Raised? I was born in yeah, born and raised, uh, mm. but partly uh, earliest years of my life, my first three years were in uh, Moranga, where my parents are from. Okay. And then and then when I was, I, I would split like between Moranga, right. between one and three, I was like between Moranga so, and Nairobi. So, I was, I was, so um, yeah, I was in Nanyuki from 2012. And you were already yeah. there. You were already there, weren't you? Yeah, 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 I came in 2010, yeah. So you were three years ahead of me. 
Mm, exactly. It's getting a bit hot. Ah, so, so um, yeah. Yeah, I, came, I, I came in 2010 through our mutual friend, Edwin. Yeah, Edwin. Um, yeah. yeah, that's so, the only person I owe I knew. Okay, yeah. so when you came to Lanyuki, you came to do the shooting, the movie, the music video. Yeah. And after yeah, that, you new YouTube, I'll send you a link. Yeah. And, I, and you found an Anuki attractive. And then I read yeah, the was full of stress. So what was so interesting about Anuki? Um, it was, you, you get most of the things that you, you know, those things that make life a bit sort of comfortable in, in bigger towns, you know. So some amenities here and there, you know, you have a, few stops for markets, you have some joints where you can meet people, you know, it's not a, such a quiet town for how far it is from Nairobi, you know, and how small it is. So there was activity. Uh, and then also people my age at the time would, when they get to that age, they move to Nairobi, they don't, you know, if you're from here, that is. It was a bit boring for, you know, when you finish college, you're going the other way rather than coming back up. Mm -hmm. So there was little jobs to be done here and there, you know, um, mm -hmm. which you can talk about. I, I taught some Kiswahili uh, to some foreigners. Wow. I <laughs> did some so you taught Kiswahili. Are you still teaching some... Kiswahili? And to whom? Um, not really at the moment. No, no, no. But, so, but who are you teaching Kiswahili? I haven't taught for. I had some, I had a bunch of students. I had some uh, NGO uh, experts who would yeah. come to, yeah, some students. Um, I had one, one, one of my long-term students so is someone who's from here. Mm -hmm. She's a nice old lady who speaks Kiswahili, but she doesn't like have a good vocabulary. Okay. So she was trying to improve her reading, you know, and sentence construction. If she had kitchen Swahili, you know, ila ya watu wa Kiswahili wa wazee. Mimi ataambia wewe eh so you <laughs> wanted to get better. So okay, so, so what happened? Yeah. You came to Nanyuki, you 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 already done your course in, in computer graphic, yeah. or what do you call it, uh, graphic design and also yeah, graphic design and animation. Yes, so has it given me, have you earned from that, you know, that course that you did? I mean, have, have you been well engaged in whatever you went to college for? Yeah, um, so when I came here, so it was a very compressed course that I did in college. It was only one year long, but they tried to stuff everything, you know. It was the college equivalent of Duty's one stop shop. We cut keys, we also sell, <laughs> you know, so does. This college this college had a journalism course, web design, graphics. Yeah. It's always in the paper by the way. It's a college that's always in the in it's the, the back of Whatever. So yeah. So uh, okay, look, now media. you now you have come back. You've done so when I came here, yes, yeah. When I came here, the work that was here was most of the work was web design and graphic design. Um, that's what I survived on for my in my early times in Anyuki. Yeah. And then, um, and then I started working at this place. Uh, and if you remember, it was called the Lily Pond. Yes, it was an I art center. Yeah, it had an art gallery, art center, it had a bar, we used to show movies um, every week. Um, so it was a creative space, artists in residence, blah, blah, blah. So there I do um, all sorts of odd things um, from design to event organizing work to hosting uh, related things. Um, stuff like that. And then when that, while I was still there, um, in high school, I'd been photographing a little bit. Um, I'd been, you know, I was in the journalism club. Okay. Uh, chairman and custodian of camera. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when you went to, 
when we went to events, I'd you know take those fifty more pictures and wow. you know hope that the film is still you know in good condition and I get home. Okay. So, um, yeah, so I I picked that up again while I was at Lily Pond because it was not like the most demanding job, you know. Oh, so right. I had time to explore photography again. Is this um, Lily Pond still there? Is this is um not really it's, not, it's uh it's gone through many transitions all right now it's a uh, it's a shadow of its former self <laughs> but are they calling it um, no uh, so exactly for, sure, actually. Yeah. for viewers exactly what was really fun all about it's a place that's set up um on a pond there's a pond that has mm -hmm. lilies mm -hmm. And it has it had a few structures, mm -hmm. and then the guys who came and set up the place that was known as the Lily Pond Art Center, they came and added an art gallery mm -hmm. and added a artist in residence studio. Okay. So when they came and added those two things, um, they did art programs. Um, there was a restaurant too. Mm -hmm. um, also, being Nanuki, there was a the usual tourist stuff, you know. Right. Um, equator, take mm -hmm. a picture on the equator because it was right on the equator where okay. it's located. It's right on the equator. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So there was it was so, a, it was a place where a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so I remember it was also those, like a, a local joint for yeah. everyone to catch up. Yeah. So I remember those days when I was there. We were doing a, a few things with you. You were always doing a website for me, so I can know yeah. what kind of stuff you're doing in YouTube. But between then yeah. and now, yeah, how are things? I mean, how have you progressed? What are you doing now? Maybe yeah. this is also a chance for you to tell our viewers what you can do for them. Sell yourself. Tell them what? Say that again. What you can do for them? Sell yourself. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, so back then, uh, photography was still just. My photograph was in its sort of infancy. Was it digital say, already? In terms of, yeah, it was. Um, but uh, there wasn't like a lot of work. I would do the odd thing here and there. Mm -hmm. But actually, in 2015 or 14, 15, I think, I had. Uh, That's when I left. It's like you were waiting for me to leave. <laughs> <laughs> So, so 2015, yeah, what happened? Yeah. yeah, in 2014 actually was the first time I did this job. Uh, there is a, a bike race that happens here called the uh, 10 to 4 mountain bike race. Yeah. And they go from 10,000 feet to 4,000 feet. Uh -huh. um, and oh, they come down. down. Uh -huh. They start yeah. from Mount Kenya. Um, the, the, yeah, from um, a point that's uh, about 10,000 feet, I think. That's why it's called 10 to 4. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not exactly at, uh, it's somewhere near Kisima. It's okay. on Kisima actually where they start, their, their starting okay. point. Mm -hmm. um, and then they go all the way down to Borana, they end at Borana. Um, so the previous, uh, I am getting my ears all mixed up, this, you know, when you get old. In, <laughs> in, 20, in, in 2013, yeah. um, a good friend of mine had started working at Lewa and she wanted people who would do, would cover the marathon, the Lewa marathon. Sorry, I'm yes. mixing up stories, but she wanted people who would cover the marathon for, you know, um, little pay because, you know, we were like interns back then. Yeah. Um, so we, um, she gave me this opportunity to cover the marathon as a starting out photographer. Um, mm. And then I used those pictures to get the 10 to 4 job um so i, I photographed 10 to 4 um it was my first time in a helicopter it was uh, amazing yeah okay. photographing from a helicopter was mm. quite an experience from the um, photographing the, the, the maradonas the, the riders this is now the, oh, the mountain bike race oh, so oh, okay. yeah just following them from that mm. elevation all the way down and mm. yeah it was amazing opportunity mm. um and then uh, from there there was just trickle you know jobs here and there 
Um, and then slowly I started to, because my intention was always to end up in film mm. and to make um, fictional films, which I still haven't cracked. And, you know, 2021 is hopefully the year. Yeah, you need a, for that, <laughs> but, you, need uh, a, for that you need a producer. You need a, what are a long form of money. Yeah. To do that. There's a, yeah, there's a lot more money requirement and all that. Um, mm. So I started doing a little corporate gigs, documentary work, um, especially in 2017, 2018. I started shooting for conservation mostly, um, for video that is. I've been doing mostly photo now. I, mm. I started doing more video. Um, went to started going to the north for the first time. I had not ventured to Samburu proper. Um, it was my first time beyond the Fiolo, up those sides, whole other world. Um, uh, working with the NRC and um, uh, Lewa and uh, Reteti, people like that. Um, yeah, so it's mostly, that has mostly been my bread and butter. Yeah, mm -hmm. just. Um, Okay. So, little events, little um, so, conservation so projects. So this bike, bike uh, thing, is it the one that yeah. gave you the interest of climbing the mountain, or you are really doing it because you know you are mountain climber? Yeah, climbing the mountain happened because um, I was always first fascinated with it, but it felt very expensive. You know, when I had inquired about how much it would cost to climb, it was very expensive. I know. So from, from where you are sitting, where is the mountain? Which direction is the mountain? It's right there. I don't know. You can probably see it. Oh, beyond the cab building yeah. and the tree. The cab it's on top of that cab building. Yeah. The peaks okay. are on top of that. Yeah. Oh, I see. But I wish it was clear. It would be. Yeah, it's a bit crazy. It's a bit hazy. It's, it's a bit hazy, yeah. So you thought it's but expensive. It's usually, um, it was ex it was quite expensive. Like you can't just climb alone. Um, mm. If if you have maybe at least three people it starts to become more manageable cost wise mm. um but anyway i'd put it off as something i'd do in the future yeah but then an bit... opportunity came yeah um is there yeah. Some, could there be some lighting in front of you because you're thinking of putting that oh yeah i, I, I yeah, cannot lighting. light i cannot light yeah, please, yeah. let me okay. let me switch on the light Is it any better? It's better. Can it be bright? Is it, is it possible to be brighter uh, or more? But it's much better anyway. But as it gets darker, we might just be. So. Yeah, maybe we can shift the camera a bit. Do that again? Yeah, try and get a bit more light. Actually, have some light here. Any better? Yeah, it's much better. It's much better. It's yeah. So you are always fascinated by the mountain. I mean, you, did you know yeah. or plan that one day you're going to climb the mountain? You said yes, Very but much. you thought it was expensive. It was expensive, so I'd left it as something I'd do in the future. Yeah. And then um, we had some friends who were doing uh, scientific research up there. They were on an exhibition expedition, yeah. um, and we were hosting them. Uh, where I used to live, um, when was I this? was kind of hosting them a little bit. This was in 2015. Okay. No, 2016. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I was hosting them there. 2015. So <laughs> mixed up. Yeah. 2015. Um, That's where I had. So I was hosting them there. Mm -hmm. November 2015 is when I first climbed um, Mount Kenya because they, this guy said, um, we're climbing and, you know, we're doing, we have camera traps up there. They were catching little uh, mammals and mm. processing them and they were from uh, Mpala. And you had to come along. Um, yeah. So they said, that, you know, since you're hosting us and you've been very kind, you can come along. And, you know, so we I, went up. So. How do you uh, feel about that? It was great. It was 
I was very underprepared. <laughs> I don't even think I'd camped properly before that. Maybe mm. I'd camped like five times. Mm. Yeah, like and and those five times I'd never like camped in harsh conditions because mm. on the mountain, uh, if you're not prepared, it's really harsh conditions. Um, so the way so I'm sure they helped you prepare. Well, there was a very short preparation time. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you know, you come or we leave you. Ah. So um, I, I, at first I went with safari boots. I had mm -hmm. safari boots and <laughs> someone had to donate their extra boots because mm -hmm. my feet were frozen. Um, oh. It was a slog. We went on a route actually that is very special because it's not used a lot. Um, it's a route through the bamboo mm -hmm. forest which is a, it's called the Bagurets route. Mm. Um, and it's because it's not very often explored, there's still little mammals you can, if you're doing scientific work, it's yeah. the best place to catch things, you know, because it's not very disturbed. There's uh, not that much activity. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so we, we climbed, uh, made it to Lenana in, the, in a very cold conditions. Uh, it was you there rainy, during the day. Like hell. You, what time did you arrive? How long did it take you from the start to the end to the top? We did something that is not very advisable. Um, so on the first day when we left, like Nanuki Town, we left in the afternoon, mm -hmm. and we just got to the campsite where we were, like the lowest campsite. These guys had three campsites at different levels. And they had one in the it? bamboo. How far was it from? And that's this, is, this was just pretty close to the fort. Huh? And it's on the walking, first day, just yeah? walking, really. No, no, this, we didn't walk. We, we we walked for about five hours, say. Five or, hours? No, three hours, say. No, maybe three hours, actually, mm. the first day. Mm. Um, it was not the best planned um, approach to summiting. Because okay. okay. um, we were not there for summiting purposes. It was mm. for, you know, to collect these camera traps. Yeah. Um, and I was tagging along to Dandia, basically. Um, mm -hmm. So I was going on their schedule. So the first day wasn't even really a climbing day. It's the, the program of the climbing started on the second day where we went from um, the bamboo forest. First day we'd walked four hours. The second day we walked um, all day. We left in the morning at eight and we got mm -hmm. to um, the caves at around six um because it's very steep on the on on this side the, on this side of the mountain is very steep to climb in the lower mm. sections narumoro mm. baguret mm. while on the other side towards timau is a bit more gradual and you know mm. you, you climb at a better it's yeah. easier it's it's the best way to climb to go so, on a gradual so slope how long climb. did it take you from okay you are doing stuff along the way but <laughs> How long did it take you from? Yeah, so one day we got to just over 3,000 meters above sea level. The second mm -hmm. day we went all the way from the caves, which are nicknamed Highland Castle, because we're mm -hmm. sleeping in a cave. Mm -hmm. And we went all the way to Austrian Hut, which is just below the summit. It's there was way to climb is the hardest thing I've ever done. Every other time I've climbed the mountain, I've tried not to do it like that. Um, so it was a long day. That was, mm -hmm. We walked all day. We so, left in the morning at 8 and we got there at uh, 7, 8. <laughs> 12, mm -hmm. hours of very, 12 hours of tough slow walking. Yeah, hours. Mm. And uh, after that, you say after, yeah. that, after that you are better prepared. And you did yeah, it a so, and then the, so that is only that is only to the hut where we summited where we summited from. So mm. in the following morning we woke up at five and summited and then went all the way down. You know, so usually mm. um, after that, as you say, I was better prepared for the mm. next trip. Mm. It was it felt like a, a stroll in the park, <laughs> which is how it's supposed to feel. You know, so, um, so if you do it properly, like a tourist. Mm. So now do you yeah. do it for hobby or how why why yeah, is it something you love doing? I mean 
What the issue? I mean, it's, why? It's very, it's very different up there. It's like, it's, it's not like going to the beach. You know how, you know, for the same reasons that the beach tickles you or, mm -hmm. you know, wilderness or whatever, mm -hmm. up there is mm -hmm. so different. It looks some, and it's vast. You can't explore all of it um, mm -hmm. in whatever. I, I know a guy who's climbed more than a hundred times and he mm -hmm. still hasn't seen so much of it. But one um, has to be very... It looks so... One, one not, very, very, not very, mm. not very, not very, just... Mm. Um, you'll go up there and find 15 year olds my this last time I went again this year mm. for my fifth or sixth trip mm. and my little brother came with me and he's 15 and he managed um, um. he was very tired he was <laughs> mm. beaten up but it was a good experience for him so how steep can yeah. it be the steepest oh, part yeah. mm. uh, there are some inclines that are quite steep where you're literally just it's like stairs, mm. some bits, you know. And yeah. you Most have, of the journey is a, is a, yeah. You have to have the, the ropes and all the gadgets, security gadgets to. No, when you're when you're getting near the top, just yeah. before you get to, just before you get to the summit, there's mm. a a via ferrata in the mm. in the walls of the because it's all rocky. So there's a cable that's, um, what's it called? Uh, it, there's nuts that hold the bolts that hold this cable to the mm. rocks. Mm. So as you're coming up, because a lot of snow, you mm. hold on to this cable. And, and parts cables? of this cable are actually, huh? Who put those cables there? Um, some mountaineering collaborative projects. Mm. Uh, um, some people collaborated with. I think they are even foreign. Uh, maybe the guys who built Austrian huts. Because it's quite the job to do. It's not. It's mm -hmm. not something that's easy to do. Okay, um, so. And yes. the cable has been there a long time because a lot of it is under snow. Okay. Um, so you'll be going, and then you get to a point, and it's it disappears. Mm -hmm. It's been snowed on, and it, it, you can't pull it back out. So um, have you played as a guide? Uh, uh, because there are people who actually do that job as guides yeah. for tourists. No, I, I, I haven't. I haven't, mm -hmm. and. For me, it's just uh, mm. I go there, I come back with amazing photographs. Mm. I get uh, uh, a beautiful. Uh, it's very different. You, mm. you, it's almost spiritual. You, you, you feel yeah. something very different when you come back spiritual. from it. I think yeah. many people go there for spiritual yeah. reasons, and uh, yeah. I think yeah. that's why the Gekuyu used to pray facing Mount Kenya. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. what do you do with those photographs that you take there? Do you ah, sell them? Do you... Share them. I, um, I'm, I'm trying to sell them. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll send you a link where you can buy them. Um, okay. You know, and uh, your fans can buy them. <laughs> yeah, so tell me, tell me, um, if anybody wants to come and climb Mount Kenya, mm. what advice can you give them? Uh, bring four pairs of socks. Uh, six, uh, four pairs of socks. Mm -hmm. Four pairs of woolly socks. Um, have have a pair of everything. Have a have a change of clothes. You know, mm. you don't need to bring so many things. Um, you you want avoid cotton. That's the uh, first thing I would say, because when you sweat in cotton, it doesn't dry off quickly, and then it starts to freeze on your body. Mm. Mm. Then it becomes a source of cold itself. But if uh -huh. you have like this uh, athletic if you have athletic materials or mm. I don't know, like fleece or mm. that kind of material, okay. um, it even when you sweat, it dries pretty quickly, so mm. it doesn't end up becoming, you know, mm. uh, a hypothermia source. Um, mm. So you just get the right materials of clothes, avoid cotton, bring four pairs of socks, mm. uh, some hiking boots, a change of shoes, because yeah. you won't wear the same shoes the whole time, you know. Mm -hmm. Some in fact, in the daytime, if it's not raining, you can walk in sneakers. They are quite comfortable. What, what, or running would one, shoes. what would the one have in their rucksack when they are climbing up there? Ah, uh, so when you climb, the the guides, um, you have to bring a porter, uh, a couple of porters, so, and the porters will carry most of your stuff. Uh, you porters, bring what, like the porters. Porters. What so when have? you the person who will take you, yeah, the mm -hmm. the guides will have. Um, 
the nini potters they bring who carry your um oh. essentials you know because mm. you will need to cook you mm. cook when you're there you know you don't bring like processed foods you know you want mm. to eat a warm meal when you're at the end of a long day of hiking mm. so um you in your day pack the potter will carry most of the will do most of the heavy lifting as it mm. were you will only carry what you use in the daytime mm. you know um mm. your water a jacket sweater mm. change of socks mm. extra pair of shoes that's mm. it you know um but if you're roughing it out there's times when i've climbed when i've had to carry 80% of my stuff because mm. i was not paying for the guiding experience i was going along with you know um people it wasn't a tourist experience mm. it was just i was going with some friends for a cheap trip um, mm. so when you do that you you carry a lot but i would advise you especially if it's your first time mm. talk to someone who guides and goes up along a lot um mm. they will really make your life easy it can be very mm. comfortable up there to the point that you don't notice it's so strenuous you know yeah. it becomes a very you know because the moment you struggle so much it starts to mm. become unpleasant mm. you know you you want it to still maintain a okay. good memories you know okay. yeah yeah and is there the be- is there a best time to go to the mountain and is there a, a time in the year when you want should not go yeah yeah okay. um <clears throat> july is generally when it's I, i would not go when it's very wet mm. um but if you are someone it depends on what you're looking for if you want to see snow <laughs> you go at the height of our rainy season and you won't believe how much snow you see um a month ago there was so much snow um january is kind of a good bet january up to early february is a good time there's a mm. lot of sun mm. um august is a good mm. time mm-hmm. um generally just avoid the very rainy oh. times because you also want good views to get nice pictures mm. um yeah so between the wet seasons those, those okay. are the best times yeah you mentioned the uh, two routes you mentioned bagureti route and yeah. uh, and you call it what the other one there's a narumoro route there's yeah. bagureti there's a sirimon mm. and sirimon is on the side of uh, timau mm. there's an atimau route mm. There is a the best one is Chogoria. That one wow. is very beautiful. Why? Um, that one is full of lake. Yeah, it has a lot of lakes. Mm. It has um it's just amazing. That one is the one, you know, if you okay. can afford you go but it's far. You know, you have to go through Meru, you go to Chogoria side, you take a I cruiser mean, from Chogoria, oh, wow. you know. So I my experience is mostly from this side i okay. i don't um but somebody coming from nairobi uh, it, it doesn't matter the yeah. distance because it doesn't matter yeah it's far yeah. for you because we're in nanyuki isn't it <laughs> yeah. The yeah 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 because i'm, I'm privileged to go to chogori yeah. instead of coming to nanyuki yeah i'm privileged <laughs> yeah i think you are nanyuki is a very beautiful place yeah. and yeah. Uh, have you ever climbed another mountain or another hill mountain yeah uh, but there is um mm-hmm. quite similar environment to here it's mm-hmm. also quite high yeah. but there is not um there are no like uh proper peaks you know um uh, what else have i climbed um, not kilimanjaro not kilimanjaro um actually you, i'm not even have you met somebody yeah? have you met somebody who has climbed mount kilimanjaro who might have compared it with climbing mount kenya and what did they say yeah yeah they they say mount kenya has so many more variations in the terrain when you if you take especially the right route if you like go through chogoria mm. it's an experience you can't get on kilimanjaro for instance okay. you know it's just so beautiful you know um, kilimanjaro is a bit more straightforward in uh, in its uh, ecosystems and in comparison to mount kenya um also just the nature of the of the summit of mount kenya is such yeah. that um 
it's a collapsed caldera. So when you get up there, when you get mm-hmm. to a certain elevation, you even start going down, you, you know, mm-hmm. so you find yourself in air, yeah, mm-hmm. in these valleys that look like you're in Mars and ah. vegetation you've never seen, you know. Right. Um, and how far, yeah, I, as, uh, as you climb, I'm sure there are, there are communities like villages and so on until a certain point. Um, or, or um, uh, not, not much, because beyond the bounds of the, beyond the ones who are farming potatoes, mm-hmm. so there's a program where the forestry service and farmers have this arrangement, I think, where um, they grow potatoes on a rotational basis. Mm-hmm. Um, so when they're not growing potatoes, maybe they plant trees, and then when one area the trees are harvested, they switch to potatoes, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um, and that is on the um, near the airstrip from the from this Narumoro Bagoret side, mm-hmm. um, where the the least touristy side, you know, oh. um, the Bagoret side is the not so touristy side. Um, but then from and by tourists, I mean like it's not often, it's not the um, a route. It's not a route that is, yeah, it's not a route that's taken a lot. Yeah. But then again, how but far? A good up, one to take. Up to what level? Is the, not is very it? far up. No, no, oh. quite low, quite low. Because okay. beyond that is the forest property. It's oh. a protected area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, that's interesting. Um, so guys, you should there. climb it. Yeah, maybe one of yeah. those days. Like, but you can be and yeah, you yeah. can be baby. Let's put it there. Send the poll. It take five days. Yeah, it take five days. Five days. <laughs> yeah. Then you're yeah, maybe, guaranteed to make it. If you come to Mahali, you can find a helicopter. I might need baby to take you. I love those things. Let's take a friend to the Qatar. So how often, like for example, after you've gone to the mountain, how long do you need to rest before you go again? Or can you go almost every other two weeks? Yeah, you can. Um, a friend of mine is a guide and he's gone. Uh, he started, he, he went on his first trip when he was 18 mm. and now he's 28, I think. And okay. he's climbed about a hundred times, ah. so no, over a hundred times, maybe a hundred and ten mm. or yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay. So you can climb if you're fit and you're, mm. you know, motivated. You can go as yes, often yeah. as you. The people who almost live there, like the porters, mm. you know, mm. they are, they they are not even they're company agnostic. Sometimes you know they they mm. go with this guide. If he mm. has many guests, then next mm. week they are going with another guide. Yeah. So these people who are constantly up there, very strong guys. Yeah. Um, some, some time ago, there were fires on the mountain yeah. every every year, maybe around yeah. February. Fire used to break yeah. out up there, and uh, yeah. for some reason, it's, yeah. I think uh, some people used to. Especially on the lower Chogoria Meru side, there's also the most recent ones. Mm. Um, well, are these being yeah. set up it's, it's... deliberately by some people, and for what reason? Yeah, there's a, <laughs> it's a bit, one of the reasons is actually a bit unfortunate in, uh, in this, it's pseudoscience. So, mm. um, there's a belief that if you, if the rain, hey. you know, the rain is not coming soon enough, yeah. you, you, you start a fire and the smoke will trigger, trigger the, rain. <laughs> the clouds, <laughs> will trigger the rain. So there's that. <laughs> yeah, when I say manga, you know, they say it's scientific, yeah, those, the people who do it. Yeah. But um, I don't know. It's, it's yeah, a bit. Um, correlation it's is not causation, they say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's nice. And uh, yeah. you talk about uh, the mountain climbing. Have but there's ever... trees that have been. Sorry? No, I was saying with those fires, there's a lot of uh, old vegetation that's been lost. Yeah, there's I know. A, I understand. But then yeah. again, uh, yeah, trees that are hundreds of years old. Mm-hmm. Does it affect the animals also? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of mm-hmm. small mammals are just scorched, mm-hmm. and you know, mm-hmm. yeah, because ecosystem really is fragile. It's, mm-hmm. it's, yeah. Okay, so um, we've talked a bit about the mountain climbing. We are also talking about you and your plants and what you do. So, yeah. 
Uh, tell us a bit about it. Sorry. <laughs> Wale. <laughs> corona, Corona, Corona. <laughs> you <need> corona. <laughs> Yeah, so somebody was. Uh, what was this? Anyway, um, since since uh, 2015, even yeah. when I was there in 2015, there was a lot of yeah. stuff, a lot of uh, hints of the town really coming up and growing. There were a lot of. At one point, point we counted, and there were about 20 branches of you know of, of you know banks. Banks had branches, yeah. and wherever bank go, there's money. Yeah. At one time, I think yeah. there were about 20 branches of uh, you know, yeah. bank financial institutions. And I'm yeah. sure, and I've been reading, and I've been seeing the celebration 100 years of Manuti the other day. And I'm sure the town has yeah. really grown at the moment. Can you comment yeah. on that? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's really, it's, there's been a major transformation. Um, mm -hmm. I think a, a big part of it was just the change of administration. Um, because the yeah and also from 20 because i i have been photographing anuki for a while just sort of you know i, I had an, i had an interest in the rivers you mm -hmm. know in how urbanization affects uh, rivers in rural mm -hmm. areas mm -hmm. because um the same problems that are in nairobi kind of are imported you know to rural places when when they start to develop yes um so I was, I was just documenting you know when there's a place so that people dump i just take some pictures you mm -hmm. know and i've noticed uh, in in through the years it's, it's dramatic transformation you know mm -hmm. there's places where the like just the road from where i live going to town was mm -hmm. there was no road there before now there's a road um there's drainage drainage has really there's a lot of cleanup efforts have happened. Mm. Um, if you remember the area outside Marina, I used to have a lot of um, curios. Yes, um, I remember. So that was a, yeah, and, and they were moved to uh, a market. All the shops in town are moved to the market. Mm. And there's, you know, it's, it's net positive, I think, but there was a lot mm. of also opposition mm. because yeah, people feel like they're farther from the money. You know, yes. um, if, you're not really exposed to the your direct clients yeah. and all that. Um, so it's really changed in that way. It, it looks a lot cleaner. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot more establishments. Mm -hmm. You know, there's one or two more choice of restaurants. There's, okay. yeah, um, real estate you see more new faces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, real estate. Back back then, we used to struggle really to get houses. Decent mm -hmm. housing was a problem. Yeah. Um, because also the other thing, British Army was still living in town a lot. Um, are they no longer living in because town? Because of that. Yeah, not not in you know like where where I am right now. Mm. This was a British Army house. Oh, I know. see. Um, and so where did they not where anymore. They I think to the base, so they were accommodated. Oh, I at, see. Uh, uh, yeah, all, all in one area. Mm. Um, they are now like in even there. There's an estate outside of the base, but mm. it's only British Army people in there. I guess it's better for you know okay. um, keeping tabs on everything for them mm -hmm. um, so that really also eased up on the cost of housing a little bit mm -hmm. it used to be so expensive um, to get decent um, it's still compared to other towns mm -hmm. it gets Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So saying, um, mm. it's yeah. really grown and become a bit bigger, and there's more. You don't recognize every face in town now, which is uh, good. Um, which is good. Before you, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't want to know everyone. Yeah, you, you don't, don't want to know. know. You don't. Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember. The, I remember uh, some time ago those uh, they used to be here in Pride. Although they bring a lot of business, the the barracks, the the British army. Yeah. 
the particular one they knew yeah, in about, town. I don't know whether they yeah. still that uh, excitement. And, uh, really, mm. it feels like a bygone era, you know. Ah. There's no, um, yeah, you don't get the dramatic uh, shenanigans you would get back then. You know, okay. remember there was a time they would even fight, and you get it in the paper. And, I remember. <laughs> you know, there's, yeah. a, there's a joke I remember. Okay. About, there's a joke I remember about Nanyuki. When uh, yeah. you know, particularly when you mentioned about the curio being moved to the market, I remember. Yeah. I remember some years back, even before I came to Nanyuki, the curio guys yeah. were the curio guys around the, the equator. When the equator crosses the, the yeah. road, yeah, they used to harass tourists so much. So they were kicked away. Yeah. They were kicked out of place. Yeah. So after yeah. they were kicked out, they went and created another equator. A few kilometers away. <laughs> <laughs> a, few kilo, a, few, a few meters from the equator. Yeah. Oh. Where they put well, no one meter. knows how wide the equator is. Yes, this is imaginary we, line. How yeah, thin they, is it? Yes. Is it a millimeter thin? Yeah, so it could they be put, as wide as a road. Yeah, you know. they put uh, their own sideboard where the equator is there. So it was very interesting. But Yuki, at that point, they had two equators. Yeah. So thank yeah. you very much for your time. It's a special place. It's a yes. special place. Yeah. yeah, I don't know whether you have any other... Uh, I don't know whether you have any um, other final message because uh, we are closing, we are coming to the end of the interview. Maybe... Yeah, I, I, would, I would just say uh, buy pictures of Mount Kenya. Yeah, from you. <laughs> Yeah, from me on the link below. Yeah, the link below. <laughs> um, uh, yes, we are I going to put. Mountain, it's really yes, we are going to put a, a link below from where you can buy not only pictures of Mount Kenya, yeah. but any other pictures that. Uh, yeah, and Jeff, other arts. Uh, Jeff yeah. Pavero has yeah. taken, and on that yeah. note, on that note, also you are, you should also like. You should and actually. Like, yes. Yeah. I yeah. should also add uh, my my newest where I'm sitting right now is uh, mm. my painting. This is where I paint from. My mm. my newest. I'll, I've tried to go back to doing art a lot more. And, okay. Um. Uh. Yeah. So there's also paintings. There's art prints to be bought. <laughs> All right. So thank you very yeah. much, Jeff. And uh, it's been a pleasure hosting you. Very good. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yes. Yeah. As I told you, the first. Not only in 2021, but the first in these videos. <laughs> so pioneer, say hi. Pioneer, pioneer. <laughs> pioneer. So say hi to our friends. Can I do it? Yeah, we'll do. Yeah. And other guys. And I'm sure we'll meet again. I'll be taking one of yeah. the trains to that place. I'll have to come yeah. and to that to book as it is open or the new key. Yeah,